Okay, so this is Floating Into the Night, the debut studio album from Julie Cruz, released in uh, 1989. Um, now, all of the lyrics are written by David Lynch, all the music composed by Badalamenti. Um, obviously, Falling is used as the theme from Twin Peaks, um, and she actually performs it live uh, on the show at one point. Um, great song, classic song, of course. Um, just nice, super deep kind of bass. Is it an actual bass in the thing, or is it just a synthesizer? I can't tell. Um, I don't know if I've heard floating. I feel like I've heard maybe one Into the Night, like parts of one of these other ones, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just this dreamy ambient thing with a splash of jazz, a splash of lounge to it. And I am very excited. I've been wanting to get to this one for a long time. I've had a lot of people requesting this one as well. Uh, 47 minutes, 10 tracks, very simple. Um, now the way this is going to work, for those of you who are watching live, um, is I have the album on Spotify linked in the description. You can open that up get it all queued up just start up with the first track and get it all zeroed out there um and or you can just use you know a physical medium however you want to listen to the album with me uh i will not be playing the music on stream as you can see in the title of this live stream when i stream it um for copyright reasons uh if i stream an entire album it'll likely get blocked and taken down while i'm streaming which is a huge hassle uh, so I will be recording a version of the stream with the music on it. Uh, check the link in the description to see if I have the uh, video up for that. It'll either be on YouTube if there's no copyright problem. If there is, I will put it on Vimeo. Uh, and that usually happens a day or two after I do these live streams on Friday. So I'll give everyone a chance to get their music all ready to go. And uh, like I said, start up with floating, get it zeroed out. And then I'll do a countdown and we will begin. Um, so again, if you are watching after the fact, check the description to see if there is a link for a version of this with the music so you don't have to sync up your own music. We will get starting here soon. Mysteries was used in Blue Velvet. Ah, okay, cool. Um, Blue Velvet was fantastic. I have seen a few Lynch movies. I have seen, uh, Mulholland Drive, Fire Walk With Me, Blue Velvet, I want to say there's another one. I think that's it, though. I think that's it. I still need to see Lost Highway, Inland Empire, Wild at Heart, Eraserhead, Elephant Man. Um, yeah, I uh, I enjoy Lynch a lot. I really like the his uh, stream of consciousness type of filmmaking. And Twin Peaks is a masterpiece of a show, in my opinion. Okay. If everyone is ready to begin, we will begin. Um, so I will do a countdown. Um, oh, I'll turn this music off here. I will do a countdown and uh, three, two, one, play. And on play, we will hit play together. Um, so if everyone is ready, let's go ahead and commence. Three, two, one, play. Well, Holland Drive is really good. Um, it's helpful to know that it started as a TV pilot and then got finished as a movie. Get the volume right. Because it, it has like two very distinctive halves to it. But once you realize that, it's a much easier to, to, to understand movie. Nice. 
Nice, uh, simple saxophone in here. Dune, that's the other one that I haven't seen. I always forget about Dune. Then there's the straight story that he directed for Disney, which is really weird. I don't even know if it's any good. I like this soft whammied, uh, Electric guitar. I look a little jittery and I don't know why. I lower my exposure. So dark. Oh, really? I assume it's not very weird. Oh. ASMR, oh my gosh. Poo, poo plays. Good to see you. This one's been a little repetitive, but I uh, I dig the vibe. Yeah, this has been pretty pleasant so far. I assume you're... Are you uh, in England, Simple Tiger? Or like East Coast of USA? Boom, boom. Poland. What time is it in Poland? It's one twenty one PM here. Nine o'clock. I thought it was way later in uh, Europe than that. No. And I got a bunch of European viewers. Good to have you guys here. You're all you're all in Europe. <laughs> well, I'm playing the perfect album for you then. This re really is an 80s album at heart.
looking up to see. Who provides this by 143 Warner Records? Because whoever is the copyright holder on YouTube determines how difficult it is to have it on YouTube. New Wendigoon is premiering. Uh, you can submit music by going to my subreddit. Um, it's linked in the description. Currently, I don't have submissions open because I have a really big backlog of music I'm trying to get through. But that's where you would go if you wanted to do it, and hopefully I'll be able to reopen them soon. <laughs> I, I used to have that when I would like uh, pirate music off of LimeWire. Um, there would be some songs that got like copied and spread that had like an audio glitch. So there'd be like a static crackle or like snap. And um, it, uh, this is a little loud. My brain still like preps on those songs for some kind of like interference. Alex, do you still think Republic by No is boring or has it grown on you? Um, have you watched the New Order discussion that we did? Um, let me look and see when, how far apart those were. Because the Republic reaction was October 2019. And then we talked about it uh, in July of 2021, so two years later. Uh, and I warmed up to it a bit. It's not my least favorite New Order album. I'll put it that way. I don't think it works well as a pop album. I'll, I'll put it that way. I think their best albums work as pop albums. That one doesn't. Except for Regret. Well, Jace, this was this was a nice track. I've heard this one before, but always pleasant. The next track is I Remember. What do you remember? We'll find out. I don't remember how that song sounds. Uh, that's an album where I can't remember the titles, but I can remember certain like tracks and how they sound. But I, I, I I'm that way with Republic. I'm that way with Devotion by Beach House because I primarily listen to Devotion on a CD in my car. Um, first two Beach House albums, primarily Devotion though. Like I don't remember which song is titled which. It's like almost like doo-wop brill building stuff. You gotta love it. Oh. Dude. Dude. Don't do this to me. This is great. I need to be rating these. Falling, I'm giving a 4.5. Floating, 3.5. This one's maybe a 4. 50s by way of 80s, which is just the way I like it. See, my music nowadays, like when I made uh, my album uh, Oakville, 
in like 2015. It's not a great album um, production wise, but that was my first album. Ooh. Ooh, it's getting weird. Uh, that album was like my dream pop send up to 50s music. So it was like 50s by way of 80s by way of 2015. Privet? Are you referring to the Eurasian deciduous shrub with, of the olive family? Or is it a slang term that I'm unfamiliar with? I know very little about live New Order. It means hi in Russian. Is it privé? Privet? Priv privet? This is an interesting track. It just completely shifted. Ooh. Now that I'm learning FL Studio, hearing synths just gets me excited because I'm like, I can do that. So what's the story behind this album? Because the Twin Peaks pilot, this album was recorded uh, when? When was this album recorded? Uh, hold on. I must timestamp the next one. That was a really nice track. I like that. Rocking back inside my heart. <clears throat> okay so they had done mysteries of love uh so there's a scene that was supposed to have this mortal coils version of song to the siren that's another album i need to really listen to um, with the rights to the song providing prohibitively, proving it prohibitively expensive, it was suggested that Mada Lamenti compose a pop song in the same style and recruit a vocalist with a haunting, ethereal voice. Mada Lamenti recommended Julie Cruz, who had sung on a New York theater workshop he had produced. The results were the track Mysteries of Love, and they were impressed with the results and they wanted to record more with her. That's cool. So I'm wondering, like, the Twin Peaks pilot uh, aired in 1990. And then the first season. When was it like uh, produced, though? Oh, the pilot was first shown in September 1989, same month this came out. Interesting. Cocteau Twins. This is an odd one. It's, uh, it's very drony. It's a very soft album.
So one of the guitarists was a, uh, he played easy listening and exotica music in the 60s. Yeah, it is a bit long. It's, uh, I talked about this many times. Songs that fall between droney or progressive and ones that try to be like, progressive is the wrong word. Songs that are droney or very minimal, that are long, and songs that are, try to have some kind of like pop appeal. And there's like a weird gray area in the middle. And those types of songs are just super hit and miss for me. Like if I enjoy the vibe it's going for or the melody, uh, it'll be all right. But like ones like this, I'm just like really torn. Cause like, I like what it's doing. It's just doing it too much. There, it, it feels like it needs some, some phrasing, some hills and valleys, but they're not there. I mean, as a single, this was released as a single. As an album track, listening to the full album, maybe. Excited to hear Mysteries of Love. Alexander's Lover. Recently got Chameleon Song Reaction recommended for you. Decided to check out the album right after it. Cool. Uh, I'll be doing their three albums at some point, and I'm very excited because I really like what they do. You you keep is it you who keeps talking about the Porcupine Tree album? I, I, I like that you can't let it go. <laughs> I really liked uh, Swamp Thing a lot. Um, but I, I, uh, I feel like you're right. That script of the bridge might be my, my jam. So we have REM, Elliot Smith, Talk Talk, Mark Hollis, Jeff Buckley, My Bloody Valentine, Nirvana, and then the Chameleons. All right. Mysteries of Love. So this is the one from 86. Kind of sad that she passed away in... Uh, uh, actually, it was earlier this year. Dang. 65 years old. It was uh, systemic lupus. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> this is weird. So, um, she had systemic lupus, which caused her considerable pain and affected her ability to walk and stand. She also had depression. That's very tragic. Reflecting on a death in 2018, Cruz said, uh, but I'm not going to get buried. I'm going to have my ashes mixed in with my dogs. They're going to spread my ashes across Arizona, and Arizona is going to turn blue. It's not going to be a red state anymore. Yeah, uh, June 9th, she uh, killed herself, apparently. I don't know how. Um, her husband said that she left this realm on her own terms. No regrets. She is at peace. I played her the B-52 song Rome during her transition. Now she will roam forever. That's really sad <laughs> like an assisted suicide what happened makes this all the more uh tragic honestly or th this album all the more kind of
I'm not looking forward to early MBV because it's I've listened to I think one early MBV song and it was just like way too noisy for me. Like the was it you made me realize, I think. Just like the post punk noisiness, I'm just like not quite the MBV I love, but Wasn't Arizona blue in the last election? Oh no, she said that on in 2018. Gotcha. Goddard did? Godard, Godard, Jean-Luc Godard, 91 years old. What were his movies? King Lear, Breathless, I think Breathless is the one I'm thinking of. This one is nice. Breathless, yep. Which I still have not seen. And the idea of like uh, assist, like consensual assisted suicide is so eerie to me. I don't know. Maybe it's because I just heard a very cryptic song while thinking about that. Uh, that was good. That was good. Into the Night. What? X-Files score. Oh, da -da -da -da. Um, da -da -da. Do, 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 do. Some has been pretty good. I'm giving Rockin' Back Inside My Heart a three. It's more of like a three point two five, but I don't feel like it's a it's closer to a three than a three and a half. I like the vibe of this one. This is good. Again, I'm so excited to be playing with FL Studio to be able to make tracks like this. Those must have been uh, 20th Century Fox at one point. Let me look. Yes, 20th Television, which was bought by ABC or it merged in 2020. Yes. That's why you have Simpsons on there and all that. I do not have a P.O. box yet. Um, at this point, I don't think it's worth the money because I wouldn't be getting enough mail to warrant how much it costs to have one. This one's really nice.
Discord right here. Hmm. Kind of wish uh, Malcolm in the Middle was on Polish Disney Plus. I'm getting clips recommended. Uh, we watched all of Malcolm in the Middle. It uh, it's pretty good. Um, really, just the last like season, like season seven, maybe half of six, were just kind of like fine. It, it, I could tell that they like kept the quality until the very end, but you could feel the. You could feel like the rope slipping from their fingers a little bit in terms of quality. But it's better than most sitcoms who go for like two seasons too long and then an extra one, right? You can't just do that to me. That's not fair. Put random orchestra hits in. He did that in Rockin' Back Inside My Heart. Like, they just random sax showed up and then it was gone. Who said, Richard James, what'd you say? Scariest song is Mysteries of Love. You were wrong. Into the Night got me really scared. I actually have this at a 4.5. It might be closer to a 4, but um, I really liked what that one did. Nice vibe. I'd, uh, is that PG Wodehouse? Is that right? Jeeves. So is it was books? They were books first or comics? Comedic short stories. Have you read any of the books? I've wanted to get into Jeeves and Wooster in general. I I like British humor. I don't know if it'd be my type of British humor, but I like it. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was one of their first collabs, right? And then after that, they did a bit of Laurie and Fry. Brian Laurie, whatever it is. Recently, oh, not recently, it was probably, oh gosh, it was probably actually like earlier in the year, maybe like June, May or June, um, I watched Faulty Towers in its entirety, just hilarious. Uh, like, John Cleese is one of my comedy heroes, he's so funny. And A Fish Called Wanda, probably like top five comedies for me. It's so funny. Like Kevin Klein. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, with Richard Curtis. The like f learning about all of the the old British comedy and where it came from, like Richard Curtis working with Rowan Atkinson doing the uh Not the Five O'clock News and like that turning into Mr. Bean and everyone like mixing and co-mingling with their little projects before they got really famous it's really interesting and there's some really great stuff hidden in the uh the backlogs of british comedy just a guy are you from america 
Because if you are, you might be my only American viewer. Currently. Industrial Symphony number one. avant-garde concert performance and it used a lot of the songs from this album but aside from that it's just Blue Velvet and Twin Peaks Clockwise? Looking this up Not from US mate? Man All of my viewers are not from the US Nineteen eighty six. That one was also pretty good. The Nightingale. I like the doo -wop melodies. So he just stars in it. Okay. Because he wrote a uh, fish called Wanda. I'll have to check out Clockwise, though. Thanks for the recommendation. If I go on Rotten Tomatoes and look up John Cleese, what are his allegedly good movies? He's Robin Hood and Time Bandits. Silverado, clockwise. Huh? That, I mean, that is true, but... People like clockwise, it looks like. Obviously, the Monty Python ones, which I've seen. Uh, I have not seen. What's it called? The Meaning of Life. I've not seen The Meaning of Life or all of. And now for something completely different. I don't think. Well, actually, isn't the and now for something completely different just a compilation? Of the show. The Wind in the Willows. Parting Shots. It has one rotten review from Roger Moore. Twenty 
21% from audience score. Director Michael Winner. That was his last movie. Oh, he directed all of the Death Wishes. Yeah, I mentioned Faulty Towers. I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So, so far, I don't know if I'd say I'd love this album, but I really like it. It doesn't do, it doesn't have a ton of variety. And the songs are a bit long for what they do. He did. And he co-created it with his wife who played uh, the, like, assistant woman. The Nightingale. It's so pretty, don't you think? The song takes forever to fade out. It will last forever. Do -do 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 -do. The Swan. Ooh. Now we have Silent Hill uh, soundtrack. Is that your share impression? <laughs> uh, yes, how'd you know? Alan Partridge. I've heard that. I don't know what it is. Oh, Steve Coogan. Um, over a variety of shows. On the Hour. Knowing Me, Knowing You. Dude, Peter Serafinowicz. I love that guy. Have any of you seen the Peter Serafinowicz show? Or Look Around You or any of his stuff? It's so good. Some of my favorite. I've been using so much fade outs lately in my music. I'm kind of scared it's going to be oversaturated. So I'm trying to work with some smooth transitions and songs. I've done smooth transitions like once or twice. I often fade out. I sometimes... Hey, Alex, I just want to say I love this channel. Keep up the reactions. Thank you, Diego. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I sometimes do abrupt stops, and there's been once or twice where I've bridged tracks together. I'm very apprehensive to do that, though, because I want it to sound seamless, and sometimes it doesn't sound seamless. <clears throat> I kind of, even though this one is borderline boring, it's kind of short and I like the vibe. The, the synth work on this has been like magnificent. It's like dark, but not depressing. It can be depressing, but it doesn't have to be. I really appreciate that. If I like this last one, I think this album might be a four for me. 45, 13. It's like a weird, they're doing the bass thing from falling. Lycia, did I do a Lycia song? That sounds familiar. No, I didn't. I've heard of that though. Why is that familiar? I'm thinking of a certain album, I think. Hmm. 
none of these look familiar, but I feel like I've heard a Lycia song, or maybe I've tried one. I may have tried one at one point. I was looking up like Dark Wave, maybe, and I was I found Lycia. His ballet movie. A lot of these songs have really good film score potential. I, love, I just love the vibe. Zajac. Will, good to see you, man. They have very ambient, ethereal, dark tracks. I'm not surprised, but it could it could be forgettable not to critique. I think I listened to it on my own. I just sampled it briefly, but I wasn't in the mood to listen to it. I did get a haircut, thank you. I think a band like Japan is way more important than the likes of REM, Jeff Buckley, or Depeche Mode. You should do them instead. I, I, I have to balance what I think, uh, what I want to do, what I think people want to see, and uh, I mean, in a way, what I think will get views is important because I'm trying to turn this into like a form of a job. Um, so I will probably do Japan at some point because uh, the Japan reaction did well. How many views is that at? It's at a thousand. You know what's really funny? Um, I uh, I got a haircut today, as did my son. And so when my wife was writing on our uh, dry erase board what we're going to do for the day, I just put haircuts for men. And then my daughter read that off. And then my son has been saying it a lot. And they know what it is, because I played it on the TV before. Haircuts for men? Really pleasant uh, vapor. People have been uh, mentioning Simple Minds as well. Specifically, like a new gold dream is an obvious one. <sighs> Don't You Forget About Me is a overrated song, though, in my personal opinion. They have this listed as sophista pop as a secondary genre. I don't agree with that. I am going to give doo-wop a plus, and I'm going to give sophista pop a minus. I enjoy some vaporwave every once in a while when I'm in the mood. My problem with it is I find a hard time getting engaged by the tunes. Uh, you have to find the right type of vaporwave. It's a really big umbrella of a genre. Uh, and a lot of it does a lot of different things. Like there's one telepath album that I just love. And it's just like super calm and dreamy. Uh, but it's very like tribal jungle sounds. Um, let me show it to you. Ooh. This one here. Um is this one's fantastic. Uh I don't love the ones that are a little more like dr 
dream punkier because it's, they're just a little like stale. I feel uh, this one is just freaking wild. Um, I want to listen to more of this. I've listened to some of it and it's very entertaining. Um, but anyway, there is the album, everyone. Okay. So that was Floating Into the Night. Julie Cruz. Um, can try to give it a spin. Nice. Um, it's very, uh, it's almost like what you would imagine like someone might put on if you're getting like a massage. <laughs> like a nice, you know, you go in and there's plants everywhere and there's a little tiny waterfall and a little, little fountain. And then they'll put on that kind of an album. Um, okay. Well, this was good. This was good. Um, oh, here, let me go to this. Uh, so I give it about a four, and these are kind of my ratings here. Least favorite was Rockin' Back Inside My Heart because it just was super repetitive. Uh, I want to say I f was it I Float Alone that I wasn't as into. Um, I don't recall. Falling, Mysteries of Love, Into the Night, and The Swan were my favorites. Um, very nice album. Um, it wasn't really boring, even though sometimes it kind of was, if that makes sense, because it just, it maintained a really nice, pleasant atmosphere um, using very simple motifs. I wish it had a tiny bit more variety. I would like the songs a little bit more if they did. Um, but yeah, quality stuff, quality stuff. Um, all right. So that's that, beautiful. Um, okay, so next album we're going to be doing today is going to be One Oh Tricks Point Never. Speaking of Vaporwave, uh, we will be doing One Oh Tricks Point Never. I'm very excited for this one. Uh, let me go ahead and get the link for you guys. Um, I'll probably start it five to ten minutes after I finish this stream. Um, this should be it. Let me check. So if you guys want to get this queued up, you can. Okay, yep. All right, so this... Um, cheers. Thanks, Just a Guy. So here is the link to uh, the next stream. Um, you can either go to that now and wait for it to go live, or you can wait for notification, check my channel, whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hop off of this stream and do some stuff, get the next stream ready, and what have you. So if you guys are excited or interested for or interested for the next one, stick around. If not, thank you for dropping by. Really appreciate it. Hope you all had a fun time. And uh, yes, until next time, boom, Godspeed. <laughs>